Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be testing 192 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z5. So these are the 48 gig DIMMs that are relatively new. They released earlier this year. So we're going to be testing this XMP memory kit that's rated for 6400. So this is SK Hynix Amdi. So I already installed two of them for 96 and that works totally fine at the rated 6400 speed on the latest BIOS. Gigabyte now does have, as of earlier this week, they do have the Agisa 1007B, just like ASRock. So we're going to be looking at the Oris Master X670E motherboard with four DIMMs and see how well this runs. Because I can do 96 at 6400, 100% stable. I've been testing it for about a week now. And now we're going to be testing two more DIMMs. So we're going to load this all the way up and we're going to see what we can do. One thing that I do want to mention, if you are going to run four DIMMs and you bought two of the same type of kit, meaning in my case I have two individual kits of 96 gigs each, what you want to do is you want to make sure that both sticks from each box is on the same channel. So in this case I'm going to have to rearrange how I have these two memory sticks. Right now I have A2 and B2 for one kit of memory, but what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move both of these sticks so that they're together on the A channel. So they're going to be on A1 and A2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the next set of memory and I'm going to put these two sticks on B1 and B2. The reason why we do that is because there might be some slight differences in the termination voltages, the resistance levels for these sticks that might differ from that other kit. Even though they're rated for the same speed, even though they're both SK Hynix MDI, there could be some ever so slight variances in the, the manufacturing of those DIMMs. So to rule that out, we want to make sure that they're on the exact same channels. So just to kind of show what that looks like, I've got the two sticks of memory that came in the exact same box together on A channel. And what I'm going to do with the, the new set of memory, I'm going to put both of them together on the B channel because they are from the same batch. Uh, if you buy a kit of four sticks in one box, then it doesn't matter because they're all from the exact same batch. So again, this is to rule out any sort of tolerance differences due to manufacturing or revision numbers and that sort of thing from the different batches of memory. So we're going to clear the CMOS. That's cleared. And now we are going to power it on with all four DIMMs. So there's that code 15. Anybody who's familiar with Ryzen 7000 series or AM5 is very familiar with code 15 at this point. So it's going to sit at code 15 until it finishes the training. I expect this to train to like 5200. With the two sticks, it trains to 5600. Now I don't know if it's going to be able to do that because I have populated all four DIMM slots. So it could very well end up at like 3600 or something. But with the new Agisa code, the memory training is very robust in terms of what it's able to do stable after doing the training. The one thing that you want to be aware of, and that's kind of why I'm making this video, is the overall length of time that you can expect this training procedure to take. Because with the new BIOS, if you populate four sticks of memory that are rated for a speed that's like 6,000 or above, it's going to take a long time to train. So just pointing that out, because that might be something that a lot of people who are not familiar with building PCs in general, especially these new DDR5 based PCs like this one, they may not be aware of how long the training takes. So okay, so it looks like we're getting somewhere. The lights are on on the uh, fractal. There comes my capture card, so it looks like it's almost going to post. So that didn't take too long, surprisingly. Okay, so it's going for a second round. But it looks like it was doing something, so it probably is going to do a second run. So Gigabyte motherboards typically do two runs. So if they post, then they'll like train again for whatever reason. So I don't have a problem with that as long as it's going to be stable. But what I've noticed now is the fans, the RGB fans on the Fractal Torrent have lit up the graphics card with the light bar on the Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XTX has also 
lit up. So we, we have our lights now. So it's not so dark anymore, so I don't need that light. We have a light bar at the top as well. So this is kind of uh, what it's like. So overclocking DDR5 is interesting, but it can be very boring because you're literally sitting here staring at the code 15. If you have a postcode on your motherboard, I highly recommend that. If you don't have one of those, then you're probably going to be watching a, a little LED that illuminates under the DRAM label. And that will typically be how you know that you're doing memory training. But these postcodes have been invaluable um, for somebody who is trying to test high speed memory or high density and wanting to make sure that their BIOS hasn't stalled out on them while training. So it looks like it's getting somewhere now. Okay, and the Avermedia card is flashing. So that, that's a good sign. That means that it's awake. It's enumerating. 97 is very good. And there's the post. Okay, the BIOS has been reset. We're going to load the XMP profile. You guys can see we are currently in the BIOS on an X670 Aorus Master on the latest BIOS. That's a GISA 1007B on a 7950X with 192 gigabytes of RAM. And it looks like it, it trained to 3600, so that is expected. So now what I'm going to try to do is I don't expect to be able to hit 6400 with this much density. So what I'm going to aim for is 4800. So we're going to manually set the memory divider to 4800 instead of 64. So we're not going to be able to try for 6400. I may try that if I can get 4800 stable. Also, what we want to do is we want to set the VSOC. We're going to set this to 1.2, so it's going to be 1200 millivolts. So I want that, but we're gonna try 4800 as the multiplier and see if we can actually boot that stable. Okay, so this procedure could take five minutes. Just warning for those who are gonna watch the video, but I think this is a very important aspect of understanding the memory training for DDR5 in order to get four DIMMs to boot stable and reliably on a consumer desktop platform. Whether we're talking AM5, which is what we're showing here, or we're, if we're talking about an Intel platform, which I showed in a previous video. So it doesn't show as much info, it's just code 15. So you just have to wait for code 15, but the nice thing is code 15, 15 is a very reliable uh, number to see because as long as you see that, it means that it's doing something. So here we go. It looks like it did a first pass. It's probably gonna do a second pass. Oh, oh wow, it's actually going pretty quick. Okay. Oh wow, it trained to 4,800. Okay, so just to kind of go over the results here, so we're running 192 gigabytes of memory at 4800. All four DIMMs are populated, so that's 48 gigabytes per DIMM. This is a two DPC, two DIMM per channel configuration. So this is the worst case scenario. This is the hardest, this is the most stressful uh, on the memory controller that we can possibly go. So with that, we can run 4800 stable. And just to kind of show the voltages here, so the V, SOC is 1.18 volts, so 1.18 volts on VSOC, and if you want to go down here, our VCore SOC, the 1.236, that's the domain voltage, and then if we look at the actual memory, the memory it has a VDD of 1.35 and a VDDQ of 1.365, but all the temperatures, everything looks good. We are running in gear one mode, so our U clock equals M clock, and we are using the XMP primary timings. So at this point, what we could do is we, we could try overclocking to say 5200. That's probably going to be the limit that's obtainable depending on the IMC quality and the motherboard's trace layout quality, because it's definitely not the limit on the memory, because this memory is rated for 6400. So that would require upping most likely VSOC to maybe 1.25 
and VDD, VDDQ, these guys might have to go up as well. So, I don't think the memory needs to go up because the memory is, you know, it's only running at 5200 if we try for that higher speed. So, I don't think the memory voltage needs to go up, but something on the CPU side would have to go up. So anyway, that's a look at 192 gigabytes of memory on a Ryzen 9 7950X with a gigabyte Aorus Master X670E with the latest beta BIOS that features the Agisa 1007B. So I guess final thoughts on what I would recommend doing. For those that really want four DIMMs of memory, if you want to populate the whole thing for aesthetics or whatever, you have to understand that you're probably going to be limited to 4800 if you want to be every day 100% stable. If you go beyond this, it's going to be hard to say if you're stable. I mean, the nice thing about AMD is AMD will typically tell you early on if it's not stable, whereas Intel can go for like 24 hours or longer where it's not stable and it's actually corrupting your Windows kernel. This happened to me the other day when I was trying to test the 13900K at 5600 on 128 gigabytes of memory and that that was really bad because I had to recover my Windows installation so the nice about AMD is that if it's unstable it'll let you know pretty early so you don't waste your time thinking that it's stable and then it not being stable now you can always stress test with Prime 95 with Ada 64 with Intel burn test there's like a lot of different things out there you want to do Prime 95 blended mix you want to make sure you're testing the memory really well uh, you could also fire up games, like Forspoken is the best game that has released this year that I use as a memory stability tester pretty much all the time. And if it passes Forspoken, I can, I'm pretty confident that it's 24-7 stable. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, if you want to run high speed and the highest density possible, I highly, highly recommend only installing are only installing two sticks of this exact same kit. So this kit from G-Skill is Trident Z5 RGB, 96 gigabytes, so 48 times two rated for 6400. I can confidently say that I can run 6400 megahertz on 96 gigabytes on this system and on my ASRock system, 24 seven stable all day long, I use it for live streaming and I'm probably going to go back to 96 gigabytes of RAM so I can run it at 6400. But if you want high capacity, if you just want to run four DIMMs, you have to come to terms with the reality that regardless of whether you're on AMD or Intel, you will be limited to around 4800 megahertz. Somewhere between 4800 to 5200 is the absolute maximum on both platforms based off of my own testing. So hope you guys found this video useful. And let me know your thoughts on high speed RAM and high density RAM because typically I only look at high density RAM. I don't bother with like 32 gigabytes or less because I think that's not enough for what I do. So anyway, hope you guys found this video interesting and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.